Anyone been out to the far west? In a good year, it can be covered in, in lots of flowering plants, herbaceous material, and these can breed up large numbers of, of lots of insects, but one of them is the native budworm called Helicoverpa punctigera, and they migrate each spring into the, to the eastwards and uh, can appear in big numbers. They don't have resistance to insecticides. They're easy to kill. But Helicoverpa armidra, which is the one you see here, it breeds locally, or tends to breed more locally in our farming systems, and it's been persistently treated with chemicals. It's developed resistance to just about every chemical that we've used against it. And so it's been a major problem pest. In terms of colour, these, uh, especially when they're larger larvae, they can assume lots of different uh, colour, colour shapes or forms. The big characteristic to determine how they're different to a looper is that for Heliothus or Helicoverpa, you'll have these four pairs of abdominal prolegs. The moths lay the eggs usually on these flowering structures, sometimes on the leaves, and uh, when they hatch out of those eggs after a few days, they tunnel in to these floral structures and they're, they're hard to find. Certainly, we've got some new products out there that are much more effective than, than the old pyrethroids, and uh, whilst there's a bit of leniency in terms of grub age, the reality is, and the label states, that you really need to catch them when they're small. In terms of uh, the life cycle, the moths, as I said, they're, they're night flying, they will lay their eggs. The night they're laid, the eggs are this pearly white colour. So if you go into the crop the next morning, you'll see these pearly white eggs. They develop after 24 hours into this brown ring stage. And after uh, three days, you've got this black head stage. And what you can see there is the, the dark head capsule of the young caterpillar that's going to chew, it, chew its way out of those eggs. So, you know, you or your consultant, whoever's checking the crop, can actually tell how old those eggs may be in the crop and when they're likely to hatch. Because the reality is, if you're putting a chemical on or a treatment on to control them, you really want that going on around hatching time for the majority of those eggs. A lot of times they'll just feed on the leaves, and that's really not an issue. You can sustain a lot of, of leaf damage. The most serious damage you encounter, and hopefully you never get to this stage with a crop, is where the large larvae are chewing into pods. And at this stage, they're taking away your profits and, and really causing a lot of damage. Now, killing grubs that large is not easy. And the reality is they've done most of their feeding and, and you've sustained the damage. So that's why I guess emphasize again, you really want to target these earlier on. They can be confused. I mentioned before, confusing a helicoverpa with a, uh, a looper. It's fairly characteristic with those, those different prolegs. But one that you're going to encounter up here, I, I think almost certainly, is a cluster caterpillar. And uh, in this particular case, this is a cluster caterpillar on the left. It tends to have fairly broad shoulders. And down the side, uh, uh, lots of stripes, but down the side you'll see a, a row of black triangular type shapes down, down either side of the, the grub. But uh, they are predominantly leaf feeders, but will go on to Bit to pods, a bit of pod feeding, is, especially as they get larger. There are lots of things in your crop that are going to feed on the caterpillar pests, or you know, either eggs or on the larvae that are in the crop. The first is uh, a damsel bug, and you can see here it's got a, this uh, strong proboscis. It actually feeds by inserting those probo the proboscis into the grub and sucking out the body contents. And this other one, this is the big-eyed bug. He's only a few millimetres long, but a, another very effective predator of eggs and very small larvae. There's a, another range of predators that will feed on them. This is a glossy shield bug, one of the predators, uh, and the nymph. And as Hugh mentioned earlier, you know, the, the nymph is just a miniature adult, but often a, a slightly different color. Um, this is the spined uh, predatory bug, but they're very effective predators, both on bugs and on, on caterpillars, soft-bodied insects, and, and it's immature stage. And the characteristic eggs of these predatory bugs are these, these fringes around the outside, like, as you said, like eyelashes. We also have what we call egg parasites. And these are uh, tiny little wasps that actually lay their egg in the egg of the pest on Heliothus egg. So instead of you getting a grub coming out, you get another little wasp. So it's really, really beneficial, but they're just a speck of dust. You're not gonna see them out there. Uh, another one that's really common throughout Australia and, and certainly through the north here is a little wasp that we call microplitis. It lays its egg, uh, this is the wasp here, it lays its egg in the first or second instar, so a tiny grub. It develops inside and kills the caterpillar host 
by the time it's, it's about 13 or 14 millimetres long and it spins this characteristic cocoon that you'll see on the plant and often the grub will be beside that waving its head around. The grub's dead, it won't come to anything, it'll do no further damage but it's provided a, a food source for this wasp which, which will hatch from the cocoon and continue the cycle over. A really good natural enemy that, that often goes unnoticed in our crops. And then we've got other ones like these ichneumonid wasps. This is the orange caterpillar parasite. Often if, you see, if you've got larger grubs in a crop and it doesn't matter whether they're Heliothus or Heliverpa, cluster caterpillar or loopers, potentially you'll find these guys flying around looking for hosts. And they, they sting the grub and the grub falls to the ground paralysed and the wasp lays an egg here just, just near the collar of the grub and that hatches and feeds externally on the caterpillar and ultimately kills it. So it's just one of many things that are out there working for you to, uh, to kill. Yeah, it's bad news. <laughs> and, and similarly, we have lots of flies out there that work for us. And again, a lot of these things, you won't notice them, but invariably, if you go into a crop that's, a crop that's got a fair few large grubs in it, or medium large grubs, you'll see these flies buzzing around looking for caterpillars on which they will lay their eggs. Some of them actually lay their egg on the head of the grub and they lay it on the head because a grub can't get his hands and pull them off. Those eggs stay there and the grub will, or the egg will hatch and tunnel into the caterpillar and, and essentially eat out its insides. And uh, you'll see these flying around. They sound a bit like bumblebees in the crop but very characteristic, particularly if you've got a lot of grubs in the crop. So it gives you some range of the, the sort of good guys, beneficials that you will find in crops uh, that uh, really are fairly, of common, fairly common occurrence.